do a little, do a little psychology 101 for you. Um, if you look at the generation groupings, uh, what we've known as the builders, the boomers, the Gen Xers, and the millennials. So you've got those four categories. Um, the builders, in many cases, are the founders uh, of some of the longer standing family businesses. The boomers probably are the group that are in their first transition. The Gen Xers, somewhere in my category, uh, definitely the X is, is a reality. I think we're all pretty much confused as to who we are and what we are. We're somewhere between the baby boomers and really wanting to be millennials. Uh, and in the meantime, we don't know whether we're coming or going some days. Um, the builders, very, very strong on respect, hard work, loyalty, practicality, sacrifice. Do I try to throw a sac word sacrifice at a 22 year old? Sacrifice that a 22 year old is missing lunch. And, but by the way, you still ordered in for him. Okay, that's sacrifice. Um, following the rules, formality, you know, there's a lineage within an organization, there's a hierarchy within the organization, and just because of the fact that I'm older than you, you call me Mr. or Mrs. And that, that's that generation. And they believe, obviously, very strongly in rewards at a later date. It's not all for today, give it to me now because I want it now. Uh, the boomers, workaholics, self-gratification, participation, team players, um, under the most sense, optimistic. Uh, remember, look at the psychology of when this group came in. You're talking about the first group being the builders, born in the early 20s, most of them growing up uh, into the workforce in the post-war era. Okay, so a very strong sense of commitment, a very strong sense of loyalty. Baby boomers, um, disillusioned, growing up through the Vietnam War, growing up through a period in our life where uh, the transparency has now come in, the propaganda from the government is no longer thrown out there at us. Uh, the kids, you know, you're starting to get some latchkey kids, you're starting to get a very different group of individuals that are coming into, as, a, as the kids, coming into a form. You're not as many, uh, not as many parents at home. Um, once you start getting into the Gen Xers, now what are you getting? Now you're getting kids that are techno-literate. These are, these are kids that probably, as you get to the millennials, the tail end of the Gen Xers and the millennials, it's the first group in history to actually be able to teach the generation above them. Right? They control the power, they control the technology. You know, you can't get your computer to work. You ever call a young kid in and ask him what's wrong and the first point in his face is, <laughs> you ever plug the computer in? Did you ever turn it on this morning? Because they assume that, you know, nobody has, knows what they're doing. So there's a sense of arrogance, there's a sense of control that comes with those generations. Um, the second point, massive, global mindset. I look at my parents, I mean, a really big trip was, you know, if you ever managed to get off the continent. Right? That, was, that was a major family vacation. A major family vacation was heading down to Florida. Now, if, you know, you don't plan something with the kids that are, that's like, you know, halfway around the world, but all my friends went there. So it's a very different set. I mean, the, I think Gen Xers are very skeptical. Again, that, that growth coming out of the born in the late 60s, growing up very young in that post-Vietnam protest war. Uh, just because the government says it's right doesn't mean it is right. Right, so you get this whole group of people that are, that are looking at things uh, and then of course they start to get into my most hated term, the work-life balance. The millennials, <clears throat> goal-oriented, uh, techno-savvy, there's no doubt. Ever watch one of your kids multitask on the couch doing homework with 17 chats going, uh, Blackberry's going, the television's on, they're on the phone and somehow they manage to get everything done? Yeah, try and pull that off at, uh, at uh, the stage of life that we're in and nothing gets done. So that's, that's the way they grow up. They, they live in that environment, they know that environment. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean they're any more efficient. They're just used to multitasking. They're used to doing a whole bunch of things at one time. That doesn't mean they actually ever get anything completely right. My kids grew up in a, ha in, in a bilingual school, half English and half French, and I think for the first four years they bastardized both languages. Somewhere down the road they actually learned it. Um, still not completely good. Um, the millennials are full of optimism, they're full of hope. They were brought up, uh, when I was a kid growing up in school, we learned what competition was. You went out to play hockey, you went out to win. Now this group, the millennials, they went out to tie. We're not gonna keep score. 
because little Johnny doesn't need to know what the score is. It's all about him participating. Well, last time I checked, when you get to the real world, there was a bit of competition. So you start to get into a very moralistic mindset. Um, I can have these discussions. I'm 43. I have a brother who's 29. Okay, yes, same parents. Don't ask what happened. Still trying to, fig still trying to figure it out to this day. So, and there's two sisters in between. So, I love them dearly. God knows we bash heads on, I don't know how many different outlooks on life, work, uh, morals, uh, it's like the high road, whatever the case is, very different sense of reality, I think, within the, gen the different generations. Um, and a little bit of social activi activism. I think if you can get that young generation to participate, if you can get them tied into something that they want to do, boom. Now you've got them entrenched, now you've got them ingrained in what they're doing, and now you're going to have them. You cannot tell.